Good morning, and uh, hey, welcome to Melco Facebook Live uh, today. Um, here, this is Mike Doe, by the way. Sorry, I'm so excited about today's topic. I forgot who I was. Mike Doe here at Melco, part of the applications team, and I am joined by my good compadres, Mr. Scott Stingle. Hello, everyone. And Mr. Nate Moore. Hey, all. So they're off screen. I guess, you know, I'm the face of the crew. We're in pretty bad shape right now, if that's the truth. So today we're going to talk about tabletops. Um, so a lot of questions have come up about tabletops. Um, <clears throat> and so first of all, let's, let's try to um, bring this down to earth and talk about why tabletops, what a tabletop is, all those types of things. So as we look at the machine, um, we'll notice that our lower arm uh, is taken, and if maybe we could zoom in on this, Nate. Sorry. No problem. Wrong thing. There we go. Um, we were talking about Area 51, and I think all of our brains are still there wondering what's at Area 51. So if you know what's at Area 51, and you want to comment on it, or you have questions about embroidery, either one, please post them, and uh, we'll make sure to answer as well as we can. So you'll notice that the lower arm that's the uh, arm that kind of comes out from the machine that goes inside the material that has the, uh, the bobbin case in it um, that allows you to sew uh, just through one layer. And the reason it's so small is so that we can get into some really small stuff. But on the other hand, sometimes small um, can cause issues when you're sewing something big that needs a lot of support. So uh, tabletops come into play. And so I will grab some, give me one second here. Um, and we will, we have three different size tabletops um, for the Melco equipment. And this is going back um, to the XTs, the XTSs, the Bravos, um, the Berninas, as well as the EMT 16s and 16 pluses. We will talk a little bit later about a difference in the large tabletop, um, but we will also take and post uh, the part numbers for these tables. Um, so what a tabletop does is, um, boy, and I lost my screen. Looks like a notepad right now. Sorry. It's all good. Um, so what this does is it slides down in, and there is a post in here. Maybe we can go to the up above screen. Um, and so there's a post in here similar to the cap driver uh, support. So. If you'll notice this shaft in here, this uh, T uh, railing here, that's going to go slide into the lower arm itself. And so um, that's how that is going to work. So now let's go back to the main screen again. And let's just do an overview. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to have more support with things that don't need that small cylindrical arm. Rather, it needs a lot more support. So what that means is, for example, with this medium tabletop, we can't have a t-shirt or a polo shirt sewn on a left chest because we need that lower arm to be able to flow in and out of the material where the table would constrict um, inside of our garment. So the table for majority of your left chest embroidery, your tabletops are not what you would want to use. Um, and we'll go over that here in a minute, but this is the medium tabletop as well as, let me grab the large tabletop, and we'll, we'll take and we'll put these on the machines here, or the machine here in a minute, but this is the large tabletop, and I'll look through this little hole here. Um, and so this guy here, this is the one that is different um, based off your machine, and so this one here is actually for the EMT 16 Plus. It's got these little peg legs on it, and those peg legs will show you how those work. But uh, for you non-EMT-16 guys and gals out there, um, the large tabletop, this is kind of what your base cover looks like. Your large tabletop will have, um, instead of a peg leg, it's got a post that slides in and out of these grooves on either side of your base cover. So if you've got a machine that's got a base cover like this on it, um, we've got a certain part number that we'll post as well for the large table. Um, but hang tight before you go to Shop Melco, and let's talk about the differences with the different tabletops. And lastly, 
I got a brand new small tabletop, still in the box, which will allow us to talk about a couple things. Um, so this is the small one. Any of these tables that you get, um, any of these tables you get is going to come with protective tape on it. So it's this white tape. Um, I would suggest taking this tape off um, so you've got this nice gray. Some people will leave this on. Um, it's up to you, really, but I, I kind of like the look of this. looks a little bit nicer um, than the white tape. Uh, so this is the small table. And uh, do we have any questions yet? No? Cool. Okay. Do the tabletops ever go on sale? You know what? That's a great question. Um, let, me, let me get back to that question by the end of Facebook. So I will, I will have an answer for that um, before the end of Facebook. I'm impressed. How are you going to pull that off? <laughs> I wait and see how that works. So um, anyway, small tabletop. So we've got the medium-sized tabletop, the small tabletop, and that gigantic one that I was looking through the hole on. Um, it's the large tabletop. Now, how do they go on the machine? Let's talk about that first. They, all three of them will go on the same way. Um, the only difference is, is the amount of surface that they have and their uses. So, you know, one of the questions that I would ask is, well, gee whiz, why don't I just get the biggest one and that'll work for everything? Well, it's not quite that easy, um, unfortunately. Uh, it's based off of what you're doing. So we've got some samples to show you, you know, which one is good for the application. So without further ado, what we need to do first is we need to take and remove um, our hook guard on the bottom. Uh, and if I remember right, that is a size two. Um, it's two and a half. Is it two and a half? Yeah. Sure, try it. Um, let's see. Am I too small already? Let's see here. Oh, no, looks like I was right. Wow. There's a first for everything, oh. folks. And let's see if I can get my head out of the view and take this off. And so I'm going to just slide this guy off. So right. Mike did not remove those screws completely. Um, I think he's very, very smart to do that because if I remove them completely, number one, I have to get them back in. Number two, they probably bounced across the carpet and I have to go look for them. Um, so for this, you don't need to do that. Yeah. Yeah, they're slotted too. Um, <clears throat> and when you tighten them down, don't over tighten them to mushroom the plastic. Yeah, so you'll see on this guy here, you'll see how they're kind of spread out. Somebody uh, probably over tightened these. So they just need to be tight enough to hold. Um, that's a good point, Scott and Nate. I just loosen it enough to get those screws off and that's it. So don't, don't take them out. And then when you tighten them back down, like uh, Scott said, don't over tighten them. So good points on that. So um, the other thing that you'll want to do, if we could go back in on the lower arm, is if you've got some, some people like to leave the cap support uh, shaft on the machine. If you've got that on, you're going to want to remove that. And so what we're talking about if everybody's like, what is he talking about removing this and putting this on? We're talking about this T-shaft here. And the bottom of the lower arm, there is a slot that this T-shaft actually goes into. And so that's where we're going to slide this guy off. This is the cap driver support, right? And we're going to take him off. And we're going to take our, we'll use our small support first. And doing so, um, let's go to the up above camera, the, uh, the blimp view, uh, as I like to call it. Um, and one thing that you want to make sure you do is you see how that bolt that I'm loosening is all the way out. You want to make sure that it's somewhat flush with the T-shaft so that when you slide it in, you don't bump your hook. So make sure that before you slide it on, take and, and loosen these guys up to where it's about the, the same level as this, this T-shaft here, okay? And I might be calling it the wrong thing, so you tech guys, tell me t what T-nut. Is that the shaft is called a T-nut? The bar. The bar itself. Is it a T-nut? That's weird. So it's a T-nut. So there you go, T-nut. So then what we're going to do is the open in, we'll slide in. Um, uh, first, obviously, it'd be really hard to get the closed end in, 
Um, I'm sure someone could, uh, could really try to get it on, but it's not going to work. So open in. I'm going to take and slide this on, making sure that that T-nut, now that I know the real name, thank you, Nate, um, and then I'm going to push it on, and it will actually hard stop itself, okay? So don't worry about, well, how far on do I push it? You want to push it all the way on until it stops. Then all you're going to do is you're going to reach down and tighten these nuts up. And remember, lefty, loosey, righty, tighty, but when it's upside down, it's lefty, tighty, righty, loosey, something like that. <laughs> I tried. So uh, now we've got this guy on, um, and you can see uh, it's got you know just a very small support. So what would the small table be good for? Um, uh, one place that I think it's really good for is if you're doing a lot of jacket back um, designs that you can open the jacket up. Um, it gives a lot of support to that table moving around. Uh, I'm sorry, the, not the table, it doesn't move, the hoop that moves around. Um, so it gives a lot more support for that hoop moving around and, and doesn't let that jacket kind of take a dive because of its weight. So just by chance, Mr. Stingle hooped me up a jacket. Actually, it's a, a hoodie on this case. Um, a new, uh, new applique design that will be uh, uh, showcasing at the ISS Fort Worth show. So if you're in, in Texas and you can make it by to see uh, this cool new um, Cobra design that we'll be doing. Um, but this is a good example of using a tabletop. Um, so what we would do is we hooped um, this guy, when he was sewn, was hooped upside down. So how we can tell that is our little uh, notch um, that goes up to the top right corner of the hoop um, is down here by my left, sorry, that's my right finger. I'm looking at the camera and trying to say that at the same time. kind of gets confusing. So um, it's upside down. So what we're going to do is we're going to slide the table and the lower arm into the bottom of the hoodie, okay? So we're gonna just slide that guy on there. Um, and you'll notice that I did not move the hoop arms out, so we need to do that real quick. Uh, and it won't fit if you're in the inboard position. So maybe we've got some comments or questions that Nate and Scott can answer while I do this. Uh, Rachel is saying she didn't even know this existed, so. Uh... A hidden product, I guess, that we sell. Well, a hidden gem. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, these are, once again, you can get by in life without these, um, but I really like them. And, and you'll see some different products, um, you know, that maybe you do that you can see that these would really work well for. Um, you know, like, for example, the you'll see here in a minute on large tabletop. I love the large tabletop when I'm doing, uh, you know, a frame full of patches. Um, and speaking of patches, we'll be doing a new video. Is that next week, guys? Is that when we're doing patches? I think it's either next week or the week after we'll be doing patches. So we have one patch video that uh, Nate is going to post the, uh, the link to on YouTube. But yeah, Rachel, these um, probably don't come up in conversation too much because a lot of the industry is more concerned, embroidery industry, commercial embroidery industry, is more concerned about what small things can I get into with my machine versus you know how I can support larger things. Um, so the tabletop, unfortunately, is not something that that normally comes up. Um, but yeah, uh, it is a very useful thing. Uh, and I had told you guys that I would have pricing um, a sale on the tabletops. And we're going to take and take 20% off. We'll get that marked in right after Facebook Live is done. But on Shop Melco, we will take 20% uh, off and have a 20% off sale on our tabletops for the next week. So uh, part numbers that are being listed right now during Facebook Live, I can't stop and do it, but I will do it as soon as we're done. Part numbers are listed. <clears throat> Scott's question, got a question for uh, us. From Judy, couldn't the medium table do the same as the small? Yeah, so good question, Judy. Hang tight with me for one second, and let's see how this works now that I've got the hoop arms in the right position. Let's see how the small tabletop works, and then we'll try the same thing with the medium tabletop. So 
Now that we have our hoop arms in the right outboard position, I would slide this on. And one thing that I like to do um, is, and this is something a lot of people um, didn't kind of realize it's there for, but I like to take the back of the product, um, the, the jacket, and I'll tuck back into the bucket. So instead of it hanging down and possibly getting sewn back to the back of it, I like to, to tuck that product back in there. Um, so now that we have this on, we can take, and I've got the machine in e-stop, we can take and see how when we slide it to the furthest corners of this, um, the table is not in our way when, when it's being sewn, but yet it still gives enough support for this hoodie that it doesn't kind of, kind of dive down in front on us, okay? So the small tabletop, I would use it as something for jacket backs, um, hoodies, uh, you know, large sew fields that are products that you still need to have a somewhat um, smaller area that goes inside the product that has to slide around inside the hoop without constricting your sew field. So Judy, this kind of answers your question. Um, as we put on the medium tabletop, you're gonna notice as we look at this hoodie and we look at this table, I mean the table itself, the medium sized tabletop takes over half the hoop area. So if I had that up in there, um, I would not be able to have the hoodie um, being able to stretch around the, to meet these corners. So more than likely I would end up getting like a, an X tracking error or it would pop the, the product out of the hoop. That's why I wouldn't use the medium tabletop uh, for this type of product, okay? Um, so hopefully, Judy, that answered your question. Um, so We've got one more comment off yeah. of what you just did. Uh-oh. Where, <laughs> where you're tracing, in quotes, yeah. with the e-stop <clears throat> engaged. Is that recommended? Yeah, so it, it's uh, the thing that I've always been told, but I've never seen this happen, is you can e-stop it and move it manually, move it around. Just don't move it very fast um, because it can supposedly the motor um, by doing that can generate electricity that pushes back down into the board and it can cause damage. So move it fairly slow like I was doing. I think you would have to move it pretty dang fast for it to, all I can think of is like an elliptical or a, you know an exercise bike. I mean, you'd have to be really pumping. But anyways, e-stop, slowly move it manually around, definitely okay, okay? So, a uh, good question here from Julie. Would these be useful with the fast clamps? Yeah, um, and it's Julie? Yep, Julie, Ch Julie Club. All right, Julie, great question. It kind of depends, once again, like what I'm showing you here, it kind of depends on what you're sewing on with the fast clamps. So, if you were doing something like... Uh, shirt pocket. Shirt pocket, no. Um, the other thing is, and I don't know that we have a fast clamp in here, but one. the fast clamps actually dive down below the tabletop. So the, the handle used to clamp it? Yeah, the yeah. handle and everything goes below it. So these are not compatible with the fast clamps. So tabletops... Wait, wait, wait. We're saying two different things. Fast clamp. Melco fast clamp. Yes. Not slimline. Not slimline. Yeah, no, okay. Yeah, it, so if you look at the side of it, the clamp um, will go down as you look at your fast clamp. It actually goes down on the side of the lower arm. And as we look in, if we can take and um, zoom in on the lower arm, you can see that this is flush with the top of the needle plate. So the, the fast clamp would actually be obstructed by the table. So. The tabletop and the fast clamps, they're not compatible with each other. So great question, Julie. Slimline's a little dodgy with it too. Yes. Because of the handle that I was thinking of when I was reading. Sorry. <laughs> so Kiki asks, um, will they work with the XL Mighty Hoop? She does a lot of shower curtains. Yeah, so uh, can we go back to the main screen? Sorry. No problem. I, I know people love to see my checkerboard Sorry. polo shirt, my old man polo shirt, or uh, button-up shirts, but that's what my kids call them. But uh, yeah, Kiki, um, the XL uh, hoop, that's the, um, uh, the Mighty Hoop, correct? And she's doing shower curtains? Yes. Great for it. 
Um, in fact, on shower curtains, if you hang tight, Kiki, we're going to show you which table I think would be best for it. You could use the small table for it, and it would be better than not having any table at all. But um, I think probably the large table, if you're using that large hoop, would give it a whole lot more surface to ride around in instead of uh, that small table. So let's take our small tabletop off and let's move to the medium table. And so loosen this guy up. And I'm going to slowly remove it, just making sure that I'm not bumping my hook um, with the, uh, uh, the, uh, the bolts that are going through the T-nut um, shaft. Is it the T-nut shaft or just T-nut? T-nut plate. T-nut okay. Um, so small table, good for applique designs, full jacket backs, things like that, okay? I won't throw this. I know someone was waiting to see if I would toss it over my shoulder, but I'm not going to. Um, so we're going to do the same thing here. We'll loosen this guy up. And the good news is if you loosen up too much, they're pretty easy to line back up. They're not that hard to, to put back on. So we're going to slide this table on. Once again, I'm just going to push it till it stops and then tighten down um, the bolts on the T-nut shaft or t-nut plate um, i'm horrible with names aren't i all right so there they are um, i'm going to undo e-stop and we'll take and let this the machine move back to center and what we have for this one is we have a horse blanket and so this we're using the 44 by 30 boy it's warm in here today i'm sweating i apologize guys um this Sorry, i need to pause you yeah you that's a saddle pad oh Those blankets are way bigger and would be used for the next table you're talking someone about. lied to me i'm not i'm not a, an equestrian or whatever a horse person is but yes this is a saddle pad i've been corrected by nate our our expert horse person so still same thing um any kind of blanket uh the medium tabletop is going to give me a whole lot more support and so let's put this product on here once again it's a 44 by 30 um hoop that I'm using. And so I'm going to just slide this guy on. Sophie corrected me and said that's actually a baby pad. <laughs> oh, it's a baby pad? pad. Pony pad. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So you can see how that guy rides on there. And once again, I'm going to press the e-stop just so you can see it slide on, um, the material slide on. And probably this side will be the easiest to see. And so you can see the product right up onto the table. Um, and ride back over. So it gives it a lot more support. Like I'm pushing hard up front and you're not seeing that hoop bounce around where if I didn't have that table on there, um, this would definitely have a little bounce to it. So uh, anything that is open or flat, the medium tabletop is really, really good for. Um, if you were, you know, if you're looking at, I, I only can get one mic. I can get, you know, I can either get the small or the medium and but what I majority do is like shower curtains like Kiki um, or I do blankets of some kind I would tell you the medium tabletop would be the best but if you told me your niche is more into large jacket backs um, applique designs um, on hoodies and things like that I would stick with the small tabletop um, so left chest on Carhartts left chest on Carhartts great question awesome yeah, so, um, you know, Scott just uh, chimed in. I, I think he's no, got a mic. So, yeah, so left chest on Carhartts with the medium tabletop. That's what I love, yes. Okay, so uh, Scott likes the medium tabletop with the um, left chest Carhartts with those mighty hoops. Um, I would say that you could get away with the small tabletop doing that as Great. well. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing a lot of them, plus you do a lot of applique designs, stick with the small table. If you're doing you know, a lot of blankets and you're also doing heavy uh, workwear jackets, um, you know, maybe do the medium. You could get away with doing majority of your stuff there. But um, back to Julie's question, you could see how if we took that um, hoodie and we actually slid it into here now, um, A, it would be really hard to get the product on and B, as I slide or we do a trace with the machine, um, you'll see that that table, and it might be really hard to show this, um, 
but let me try to. Um, it's already pushing really hard up in this corner. So you can see the table is already there and I'm not even, I'm probably still five inches away from getting to the top corner of this applique design. So the medium tabletop with hoodies and applique designs, that table's way too big to, to accomplish what we're showing. Okay, so let's take this guy off. Other questions, comments? Yeah, you bet. <clears throat> uh, do they work with the older Big Red machines also? Yeah, so the older Big Red machines um, has, uh, there's a tabletop for it, I believe. I don't know that we still carry it, but it doesn't have the ability to do the small tables, the medium tables, and the large. There's only a large table for it, and in the case of those, on the red and whites, if you look at the casting, the lower casting, there's two holes, and the way that table mounts is it actually screws into those two holes. That's what those holes are for, is to hold the table on. So, totally different uh, tables. We'll have to check, whoever asked that question, we'll check to see if we still carry that table or not, and we will comment on that after the Facebook Live is over, okay? One of, one of the bigger issues is that that machine does not have that channel that good. that T-nut plate goes into. Yeah, good point. What, what Nate brought up is the red and whites, um, as we slowly, once again, when we take these off, we want to slowly bring this off just so that we don't bump our hook. Um, the uh, red and whites, as we zoom in a little bit, um, uh, to, and we're doing that, we don't unfortunately have remote controlled. Uh, so, Lower arm is round on XT and above machines. Those red and whites has a square lower arm and it doesn't have this shaft on it. It's got like a dovetail thing that hangs down that the uh, cap driver support um, that's built into the cap driver slides into. So that's why the red and white wouldn't work is because it doesn't have this, this round lower arm, okay? Good question, good question. So last tabletop is our big boy and so the big boy goes on the same way um, we're going to just take and slide it um, underneath the hoop arms and usually what i do is i try to support it on the lower arm and then slide this guy in and so it's a little bit harder but it's not that challenging to get on and so once it's on i'll tighten those uh nut or those bolts down again I pushed it all the way back as far as I can. But what you'll notice with this, before I do anything, you'll notice that the table is pretty flimsy. That's why we put these legs on it. And the legs slide down and sit on those outer posts um, where the support table is sitting. So you can see my hand down here, my right hand, see where those posts are. And now you can see that that table is nice and solid. What this would be good for is, let's say you're doing patches all day long. This would be a great thing to have so that your material, as you slide it on, can sit flat on this all day long. So you're not getting the bounce from everything. Um, that's what I would use this for. Uh, if I was doing, you know, Kiki's thing about doing shower curtains, you know, this may work better, but I still think the medium is probably sufficient to do it. Um, you also get a lot more, you'll notice out front, that you get a lot more in front with the large tabletop than you do the medium tabletop. So if we look at this distance here from where the needle plate would be to this one, it's probably another 20% longer with the large tabletop. So that allows a lot more support as we move this guy out. You know, I can get all the way to the back of the hoop and just barely the hoop is coming off the front, but it's still being supported. So that's where that large tabletop would be the best. Okay. The tabletops work with fast frames. Uh, fast frames. Uh, so if we're thinking of the seven and one fast frames where you use the uh, adhesive, the tearaway adhesive, um, those fast frames, uh, yes, this would work fine on because it's a flat surface with the fast frame. If we're thinking the Melco fast clamps, once again, 
they are not compatible with the tabletops because they ride low. The bottom of the clamps ride down on the side of the lower arm and the table sits right at the same level as the top of the lower arm. So that's why it wouldn't work. But yes, the, the fast clamp, I'm sorry, the fast frames, gosh, man, too many fasts. The fast frames, it would work on. Other questions? <clears throat> Does using a table limit your design area at all? I see um, that it affects jackets and hoodies. Yeah, so uh, once again, um, at the very beginning of this, we talked about how, why we have such a low, uh, small arm and the importance of that to get into things like pockets, into socks, to small products. Um, and the larger that lower arm is, or the larger the surface is where the, where the needle penetrates down to make the, the tie with the bobbin, the larger that is, the more limiting it is if the product is tubular, meaning it's, it's fully round and you can't open it up. Okay, so um, same concept when you're using tables. The more width you add to the table, the less sew field you've got if it's a tubular good. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Does it work with slim lines? Slim lines. Um, so you can use a slim line on this. My only concern about the slim line is um, with the tabletop is A, that the product opens up um, enough for the table to get inside of it. And the other thing is, is typically the, uh, um, uh, the slim line clamp will droop just a little bit when you open it up. So the table is going to push all that up and so the interference with your needles um, and the um, back of the needle case becomes a little bit more um, of something that you want to be careful with. So yes, it would be, but if you're not careful, you could do damage to your needle case um, by using the two together. It would also depend on where that lever, if, if you could actually clamp it or not. Yeah, so uh, Nate is on today, so that's great. I don't have to repeat his questions, but yeah, it's totally dependent on where the handle is on the, uh, on the slim line. Um, if I was going to use it, I probably would stick with the small. Um, definitely, um, the, the larger it is, the more limiting it is like we talked about. Cool. Um, so just a couple uh, other points. Um, this Friday, we'll be doing another design shop talk. Um, Samantha will be joining us from Florida again. Um, so please tune into that. If you've got questions on that, um, please either comment on this video. Hey, I'd like to see if you could answer this design shop question or this digitizing question, or look on uh, Melko's Facebook here this afternoon and we'll have the post up uh, for that. And we would love to answer your uh, un unanswered questions about design shop. Uh, the other thing is we talked about, I believe next week, um, we will be doing patches. Um, we will also be doing a video on um, how to use a MacBook um, or a Mac um, to connect to your Melco machines and run design shop software. So we'll be doing that in a couple weeks. Um, uh, so if you're a Mac guy or a Mac gal, um, tune in for that one and we'll show you how that's done. Um, we'll be using some third party software to do that. Um, but it's a, I think it might be a really interesting topic for, for you guys and gals that are just Mac lovers and, and maybe don't like uh, Windows too much. Um, you still have to use Windows a little bit, but you can do it on your Mac, so it's, it's pretty interesting. So tune into that. What am I missing, guys? Uh, it does work. The tabletops do work with the Bravo machines. There's yeah, no so question there. the, the question just was, um, do these tabletops work with my Bravo machines? The answer is yes, but let's make sure we're clear on this. The small and medium tabletops are universal that I just showed. So if you have an XT machine and higher, including a Bravo or a Bernina, you can use the small and medium tabletops, no problem. The large tabletop, Nate has posted a link for the Bravos and the Bernina machines that have this base cover on it. Um, if it's got this base cover on it, and let me show you the right side, um, you would want a different large tabletop because the instead of the peg legs coming down, you're going to have this um, kind of post that rides um, kind of like a rail inside these grooves on either side. So if you've got that type of machine 
Bravo Bernina XT, XTS, um, or you have a base cover like this on your machine and you have a round lower arm, you'll definitely want to use the non-EMT-16 large tabletop. Um, obviously EMT, um, you've got the peg leg posts that, that sit like this one that we've got on there now. Um, so two different part numbers, make sure that you, you uh, request the right uh, part because you'll be sad when you get it and it's the wrong one. So we've got those posted. Other questions, We're comments? Good. We're good. Awesome. So kind of a short one today, um, but thanks for joining us. Uh, tune in for these other things coming up. Also have a couple uh, new things coming up, talking about Melco uh, going into the digital world and other decoration types that you could offer your customers through some other products that Melco carries. So tune in and uh, yeah, thanks for being a Melco customer. Have a wonderful day.